So posing tip number one, let's start with the front pose because we can find a lot of issues with just the structure. The judges want to see your core. They want to see your shoulder. They want to see everything up here facing them. So the last thing that you want to see in bikini posing is someone going like this. You want to open up the chest, but still keep your waist facing away. You want to keep your waist facing this way and you want to open up here. That's going to bring a nice taper. You're going to be able to see the calf shoulders, but also keep your glute intact. So your hips, your waist facing towards the wall, your upper body facing towards the judges. Jessica, Humble Texas, this was you winning the overall. This is fantastic. What do you think you're gonna remember from the show? Honestly, it was a shock to get different feedback because typically my feedback has always been like bring your glutes in tighter and that's been a main focus. But this show showed me something new, especially with Maddie being my competition. Like her waist is incredible. She's got a really tiny waist, which I thought that um, I kind of had advantage of in a lot of shows and a lot of competition, but it was just more and more uh, data for me to collect and me and my coach like, oh, my waist could be smaller and I can tweak that with posing. I can tweak that with how I flex the abs because there's multiple ways you can flex your abs. So um, this show is amazing and, and John Sherman is awesome for even promoting the show and also congratulations to him and the, I think it was like a battle that he had against cancer. Yes. And uh, so it was, I think, a meaningful show for everyone. And it was also the largest Muscle Beach classic that there's been. So the competition was really good. And um, again, just more uh, data for me and my my coach to collect on what we need to work on for nationals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were sitting there during prejudging and um, uh, there was a good-sized crowd there. And then all of a sudden, an hour into prejudging, <clears throat> uh, my photographer friend Jason looked at me and said, look behind you and I look behind you and there was quite a few people that started to come in. So it was a good size show. It was really mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Um, I never heard that before that uh, you can flex your abs different ways on stage. What do you mean by that? Well, so you can push your abs to be like low and you can breathe out, which creates more of like that six pack definition you can pull your abs in a little bit, which brings more of the obliques out rather than showing the defined six pack. And that's really in bikini what you wanna see. You don't wanna see a six pack. You you really wanna see just a nice toned stomach with cuts of the oblique. Um, and then of course you can let your gut hang out, which is not ideal, but you'll still see your core. Um, and then you can even like breathe in and then push out, which uh, is is hard, um, but almost like a slight vacuum to bring the stomach very tight. And that's where I want to be is like bring sort of a vacuumed core look, um, but also not vacuumed enough to where my ribs are just like protruding. Mm -hmm. So the core is a huge part in bikini because it really creates that illusion of the frame that gives definition to the glutes. I've heard you say, um, keeping on the topic of posing, that uh, figure and bikini are a little restrictive with the posing. I mean, you wish it was a little bit more uh, like, you know, you could do some more poses, if you will. Yeah. I mean, you know, each division has their criteria and what they're looking for. So there's no arguing that. And uh, you just have to follow the guidelines, but um, I always thought it would be a cool concept to have women um, who have bikini bodies, not necessarily like WPD bodies, but bikini bodies pose like WPD women just for the fun of it, because it really is an art. And um, I've practiced a lot of WPD posing just in posing classes with posing coaches on my own to music. And um, you don't have to wear heels. It's just a whole different, it's a whole different art in itself. So, um, I mean, I, I think that'd be a really cool concept to bring in, but uh, it would definitely 
blur some lines over <laughs> what the criteria really is supposed to be in bodybuilding because it's a pretty regimented and structured sport. So um, I don't know if that will, have, maybe that's just a pipe dream, but. You've done some women's physique posing just for fun? For fun. Um, I remember I first, when I first started bodybuilding in 2018, um, Terrence Ruffin, I saw his uh, survivor routine that he did at a show. So I hit him up and I asked him for uh, posing classes. So we did that because I was doing figure at the time. And I was like, look, I know I'm not WPD, but I really want to just learn a routine. So we chose the song Vertigo by Khalid. And uh, I still have videos of me posing to that. And I just remember I would go home because I felt really free at the time. And I would just sit there and pose to it. And uh, I love it. And also up at Destination Dallas, um, they have posing classes every Sunday with Ray Baker. Um, they have a women's and a men's and I attend both because I really enjoy posing with the guys. Like, not even because I wait, don't want to be in classic physique, but really because the posing is so much different and you get to see your body in a completely different light. Um, I think it's really fun. I don't know if he would have me because he has a lot of clients, but I, I've thought of maybe lifestyle <clears throat> hiring Ray. Uh, I just think he's cool. <laughs> but he's a cool guy. And he's a great coach. Yeah. He's, he's, he seems pretty chill. He's super chill. Um, we I also have a video of you, uh, Belton, uh, Texas Cup 2021. Uh, 22. Was it 22? 22. Yeah. What? 22. Rock's discount was 21. Okay, so 22. Cup was 22. Last year, uh, Belton, Texas. Uh, it's in Central Texas. Uh, what, do you, what do you think you'll remember from this show? I, I'm trying. I was there. I, I, I yeah. Try to remember too. Like, uh, I remember it being cold. It was so cold oh. in the back. <laughs> oh my gosh, the show was November. 12th i want to say um november 11th or 12th and man backstage it was cold as hell uh and you just had to get through it you just had to get through it that's the thing about the winter shows is like when you're so lean there's no getting past plus they had like the garages up but um you know uh was it like the the parisos always host a good show so, yes um there's no no complaints. Every MPC show is gonna be that long, drawn out, um, nine, ten, eleven, twelve hours. So you just kind of got to deal with it as a competitor. It was cold. Um, yeah, staying in the NPC. I mean, the show, John Sherman show, uh, Ed and Betty show. Uh, how has your body changed in between those shows? I know you, you're in another league too, but. Uh... Yeah, um, well, at the time, I remember you, I remember at the Muscle Beach, you said, wow, you, I think you were more shredded last year. And I was like, damn. I mean, I, I went back and looked on your Instagram after the show and, and I mean, you were shredded. I don't, maybe just that day. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so, so no, um, of course, it, every, every show, the lighting's different, you know, for sure. The lighting and, is different at, at Sherman's. It's not, it's not a bad different. It's just different. It was different. Yeah. It was lighter. <clears throat> It was uh, yes. more fluorescent, I think, which wasn't a bad thing, like you said. Um, the difference is I have gotten more conditioned, like staying on top of my diet definitely put me in an, in an advantage, I think. Um, feedback I got was stop flexing so hard. Um, probably my upper body, like I just need to focus on letting it kind of loose. In terms of my physique, my glutes came in so much more. I mean, like... They're much higher now. Um, I've been training them so hard because for so long I skipped out on glute kickbacks, hip thrusts, glute bridges, any type of glute isolation. For the past four years, I've just been doing like sumo deadlifts, RDLs, squats, and it was never just glute focused. So I had I have a good foundation of leg muscle, but it really was about pulling the glutes together and bringing them higher, which is still something I'm working on. So I think the biggest difference in that show and this show is just the fullness and the density of my glutes. You see a lot of people in the gym, uh, you know, those corporate gyms, 24 hour fitness, whatever, <clears throat> doing hip thrusts. I don't see people often do uh, single hip thrusts, but uh, I've heard you say you you do that. Uh, why do what's it is why do why is a single important? 
Um, single is important <clears throat> really for symmetry, I would say. Um, like I had a pretty, pretty noticeable uh, asymmetry in my left glute and my right glute. And that was something, it, it was very noticeable. Um, like my hips, just whatever that was. And uh, you could tell in my check-ins. And so I worked extensively over the past eight months up to the show doing single leg movements just so that I could bring that left glute to come out and pop like my right one. Um, so I, I worked a lot with Caleb Siverly. He's a coach up at Destination Dallas and a really good friend of mine. He has been for years. And um, we worked so much on single leg stuff, just single leg hip thrusts, um, single leg RDLs. And uh, I think it also gives you better mind muscle connection. Like you have to focus on one, maintaining your balance while you're doing these movements. And two, all of your focus is designated to that specific muscle. So it's not like I can, you know, try and travel the mind muscle connection to both legs. It's one leg at a time and uh, something I never did before, but it really does help. Perfect. Thank you for explaining that. You see on the bottom right of your screen, uh, Jessica is going to be posing for her second time and giving a posing tip. We pre-recorded this. Let's go to that right now. Posing tip number two is relating to the feet. Um, we have a tendency because our upper body is very close to us to whenever we're in a back pose, just start moving our upper body down because we think that it's gonna push the glutes out when in reality it creates not a great illusion. So always keep your body upright. If you're lean enough, your glutes will show. Push on your feet and push through your feet to get that glute and hamstring connection. And then from there, you can actually see your tie-ins a lot better. Keep your body upright, keep everything nice and straight, and don't let your elbows protrude too much out because it'll take away from the glutes. So always start from feet and legs up. Jessica, thank you so much. Um, what about the NPC show of champions? You're still in bikini in that show. Mm -hmm. uh, that was in Austin, right? Yes. Yeah. Let's look at that video. Uh, what do you What do you remember from the show? <laughs> I remember thinking I was confident. I this was my first bikini show coming out of figure. This was my first show that I had done since 2018. There was a three year timeline where I didn't compete. And um, I thought I knew what bikini was, and I got third place in my class, and I really was wrecked. I, I, I kind of felt devastated because- This was in 2021. Mm -hmm. okay. And um, it really just was presentation. I remember, it, tip, if you're a bikini competitor, look, we're not supposed to be at 4% body fat. I, there's, I personally have observed there's absolutely no reason to be eating like Sour Patch Kids, Skittles, drinking alcohol backstage to do anything. It, it really is not necessary um, to go on stage. So there were some mistakes I made at that show um, and also just not being lean enough, like not knowing how to pose correctly. My glutes weren't all there. 
And uh, when I look back at it, I, I, I'm so proud of where I've come. Like I could have given up and just been like, wow, like that sucked. Probably not for me. I was like, hell no, nah. I got to come back. I got to come back. That was not it for me. And uh, I did. I, I worked and, and I, I got a better grip of what, what bikini is um, because I needed to. I needed to be humbled. And even in the show that I did, the Heart of Texas, where I got second place, um, September, I was humbled there too. Mm, I don't think I knew you did that show. I did that show. Oh. Um, on the NPC website, they spelled my last name wrong. So like, if you look under my name, you, see it. you can't see oh. it, which is fine. Um, but yeah, that show also was pretty humbling. Like I literally walk, I, me and my coach were like, Hey, well, we look good. There's a show in Dallas, go hop in it. And I was the last person to sign up and, um, it was a battle. Um, but the girl who won, she had some really dry glutes. And, uh, again, I was just, uh, another experience of, okay, like nationals is not going to be an easy battle. Um, I can have all the confidence in the world. And when you're standing alone and you're taking check-ins, you can be like, damn, I look good. But when you're standing next to girls who have also worked their asses off quite literally, it's a whole different ball game. You really see where you need to improve. So that's why I've been competing and I've done these three shows over the past month and why I want to continue to do these shows because the only way you can see where you're truly at is standing under those lights next to your competitors. It's not ever going to be a check-in. It's not ever going to be just like in the gym looking around like you've got to be exactly where you're going to be at nationals under the stage lights, prepped, tanned, fed, carved up. You know what I mean? Mm. So to me, it's worth it. And second place, like I was actually kind of happy about it because I was like, you know, it shows that I do have improvements to make. And to me, that's special because I like to make improvements. Like I want to come in after the judges give me feedback and bring the improvements that they want to see. Do you think people talk enough about post-show blues? Because uh, I kind of feel like you went that route a little bit that <clears throat> after this NPC show of champions, you experienced some of that. Or am I wrong? Like in 2021? Yes. Um, post-show blues, like a rebound, or you mean like literally... Just kind of just feeling down after the show and, and trying to rebound after being on prep for so long and... For sure. I mean, it could be talked about more. I think it's almost sort of a guilt thing because we there's a lot of competitors, including myself, like last year after the GBO, I rebounded. I'm not going to sit here and act like I didn't rebound, you know? Mm -hmm. Um you're you're on prep for so long that the freedom feels amazing so one it, it's it's a really weird dynamic in the head because on one side you have all this freedom and you're like fuck yes time to go eat time to have fun with friends and family and then there's the other side of like well i still really want to keep myself in shape so that next time i prep it's not so hard and it i, I can just kind of roll into it more naturally um so i think the blues come from the fact of like i went through this prep and maybe I wasn't in the moment at all the times and I wasn't really being grateful for how I am and how far I've come. And I should have been more in the moment and in my body during that prep because now I don't have that anymore. And it would have been cool to uh, really just internalize that that feeling of working really hard. So I can see the post-show blues. Um, but this year, my focus is like, I'm not going to experience that. I'm going to have a good post show reverse mm -hmm. i'm gonna make sure that i'm on top of everything but still enjoying life and i think it's really just about maintaining that balance mm -hmm. still enjoying life you you're a person i've only talked met you this is the second time i've talked to you in person but uh you're you you're in the moment right now you're present yeah. you know and and for someone like me i'm i'm very introverted <laughs> so you have any advice for me <laughs> on just being in the moment and living that moment living your truth you know what i mean yeah. Not, the, um, not a very good question. But. <laughs> no, I mean, it's so true. Like, it really is about loving it, you know? Like, I'm so grateful to be here right now because this is a completely new opportunity. Like, never have I been in front of a mic and talking to someone with your experience and talking to someone who actually 
cares to know more about the sport or the athlete. And so I can't take these moments for granted. I can't because like at the end of the day, I'm going to reflect on this and look back and be like, wow, that was amazing. And um, I think as long as you love, you're loving what you do, then it's easier to be in the moment. But like, so many people struggle with loving their job, loving um, whatever hobby they're taking up. Like it's just something to fill time yes. until we die. Most people don't like their job. Most people do not. Yeah, in the whole country. Yeah. yeah. And it's sad because it's definitely, it's reflective in society. Like we eat ourselves into happiness, but really it just brings us into a downward spiral we buy things to try and satisfy whatever void we're feeling from not being fulfilled from our job so we think that a shiny new object might fulfill that but really it's like i want to experience the depth of life that you cannot get with buying stuff on amazon like i can only experience this fulfillment through being the best me possible and connecting with myself and seeing myself in the mirror every day and feeling super proud of who I am, what I did that day, how I felt in these moments. And I mean, that's not to say like I go through really tough time. Like, you know, I cry and I pray and um, I sit and I think and I overthink. But um those moments are really fleeting, especially during prep, because the more I dwell on that shit, the more I'll want to just like, I'll feel discouraged and be like, I don't care anymore, you know? So I try not to to feel, I try to really take everything with uh, as much like, this is the moment right now. Mm -hmm. Just love it and live it. How often do you pray? I you pray, pray every day. Every day? I pray every day. Well, I talk to God every day. I pray I'll, you know, wake up and be like, thank you, God. Or like when I wake up and I see the sun and it's a beautiful day and I'm driving, you know, just somewhere random, there's just this feeling of I would not be able to be here today with unless I, God, God gave me this day. Yes. God gave me this day and I'm going to use this day. Um, and I'm going to make God proud because ultimately that's my biggest teammate. And, um, it sounds really cliche and stuff, but I graduated with a philosophy degree from A&M. So for four years, I spent a lot of time thinking so logically and um, pushing that part away because uh, it's kind of a scary thought to try and put your trust into something that you don't know if it's real or not. But the more you connect with whatever that intangible feeling is, um, at least for me, I was like, wow, like, it doesn't matter at the end of the day whether it's real or not, because to me, it's not a means to an end. This is just an everyday, like, gratitude, like, thank you so much for giving me this day because it could be so much worse. And, like, the sky is still blue. We're not in Wally. -E. Like, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like you can live this life and be so happy. And and I want to spread that to everybody. I want to change people's lives. Like I want so badly for America to be healed. I don't know if this sounds just like way out of line, but just like, you know, I, I was at the beach after Muscle Beach. I went to the beach the next day and I'm thinking, gosh, like we need help. You know, we need to be the change. And, um, and it's really... It's, it's hard. I think people are discouraged. I think people, like you said, are unhappy in their positions and their jobs and, and they're, they have to feed their family. They're in it for a paycheck. But it's the simple things just like going to the gym, moving your body, going outside for a walk, um, playing with your animals, uh, spending time with people you care about, like uh, eating good food that gives you makes you feel amazing instead of feeling like shit at the end of the day. Like people just eat themselves and play do whatever, play on their phone and, and, um, and, and what, what is that doing, you know, to your heart? Like I'm in it for the long haul. I'm in it for the long haul. I want happiness. I want that eudaimonia that Aristotle talks about, you know what I mean? I want to be content. I don't want to just be like happy in the moment. Cause I ate a crumble cookie and played a video game and won. Like I want, I want, I want that sometimes, but I also know that ultimately I just want a really good, healthy life and I want to spread that to people around me and I want to be involved in that. 
That's what was that word again? That's the second big word I've heard you say today. Eudaimonia. Eudaimonia. <laughs> yeah, it's like a state of contentness, um, contentment, uh, and uh, it's described as like once you have a certain amount of education because you've been reflecting for so long, um, you just kind of reach this state where it's neither euphoria and it's not sadness. It 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 really is just a state of I'm content. Everything is content. I'm all right with where I am and there's nothing I'd really want to change. And that's my goal. That's beautiful. I could listen to you talk all night. Uh, we're well over the 20 minute mark. Let's go to you posing and giving a posing tip oh, right shit. now. Like, <laughs> You're fine. All right, posing tip number three. Um, when we pose, this is again, it's an art, it's a very natural thing. So instead of thinking it as individual poses, like a front pose, quarter turn, and then you move here, and then you move here, think about it all in one tangent flow where you go from here to here, and you're moving, and you're constantly just kind of flowing throughout the entire segment. It shouldn't be individual segments of a movement. It should all flow together. And uh, that just takes practice. And again, think of it kind of like dancing or like uh, just walking and keep practicing, practicing and practicing because that's how you get better at that. Jessica, uh, thank you for that. Um, there are some very inspiring pictures of you. This is not hyperbole uh, of you talking about your acne from ways ago. Mm -hmm. um, I have acne, uh, it sucks. But um, it does. Yeah. It's um, uh, one thing I was just about to say is there's a video of me like three years ago and um, I have, I'm taking video of me with my phone and I have like 30 pimples on my face. So, yeah. so it was really interesting, but, um, um, well, your did, skin did, looks so clear. Did you, it, your acne cleared up all the way through Accutane? Is, uh -huh. is that the only thing that got the yeah. job done? Well, I mean, a good regimen with it, like the, <clears throat> you know, like you want to get, you want to moisturize and clean your face as much as possible. But yeah, Ac Accutane changed my life. I will vouch for that. Accutane changed my life. Mm -hmm. Did you ever take Accutane? I've never done Accutane. I'm, I'm interested to see. I'm so happy it, it worked for you. I, I don't know if my esthetician would I don't like even that think you me. would need. I mean, yeah. you don't even need Accutane. Like your skin looks clear. Uh, my, mine just break out so much with dairy. Yeah. Dairy. And also, I know that eggs aren't dairy, but eggs too. Maybe some fish. It's just like all salmon and stuff. Um, shrimp, mm -hmm. which is weird. High sodium. Yeah. Um, so if I finding just, those trigger points, you know, I just avoid it. Uh, I'll. I just freaking miss pizza. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> so, tell me about it. So. I fucking miss pizza too. Damn it. But I, I take the cheese off. Oh really? Yeah. I knew someone who did. I worked in an Italian restaurant. And I remember this lady ordered. She was like, yeah. Um, can I get a pepperoni pizza or like some, some type of pizza? And she was like, but no cheese, just a, just a sauce. And I was like, hmm, that sounds kind of good. <laughs> it really is. a it's No. A, it's a, a, Damn. I do miss my cheese though. So yeah. But you can get like, um, like there's so many foods now. Like you can get dairy free cheese or dairy free pizza. Can you? Fuck yeah, dude. They, they use something else. Yeah. Like something similar or something. Yeah. So I know like, there's I know there's dairy free ice cream. Which is well, pretty cool. So there's um cre I like when I make a refeed or like a cheat meal, whatever you want to call it, one of my favorite go to's that was recommended to me, um, ground venison, jovial pasta. Okay. It's like a vegan 
pasta. And, um, you know, whatever marinara sauce you want, it doesn't matter. But there's a Mykonos uh, cream cheese and it's cashew cream cheese. So it's like... I'm allergic to cashews. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. What about almonds? Yes, almonds are fine. I don't know if they have an almond cream cheese. There's a lot of options, though. Like, the food industry, tell me it's not blown up in the past 10 years. Like, yeah. if you went to a grocery store 10 years ago, you wouldn't see over half the products they have now. No. It gets, like, innovating, 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 which is really cool because you definitely can find pizza that's, like, dairy-free. Uh-huh. Vegan pizza. Sure. Uh, uh, how long have you been on prep right now? This year? Um... Serious prep since May. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know why I'm asking this question. Uh, this is Absolutely. kind of out of left field, but uh, I mean, alcohol is wonderful. We we love it. It's part of our culture. But uh, when was the last time you had a sip of alcohol? I mean, do you? I like to. S I um. <laughs> you thinking about you like to do edibles or something like that? Yeah, let, well, even that's kind of hard when you're on prep. Um, I don't like to drink. Both my parents were alcoholics. I'll be very, very vulnerable on that. Um, both sure. my Both my parents were alcoholics. My dad has been in January. It'll be 10 years since he's had a drink. And um, I remember, I mean, like, you, you know. Do you live the sober life or? Uh, um... I like to, um, like, I vape sometimes, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, like, I've definitely had great experiences with certain psychedelics. I'll mm -hmm. be very open. Sure. Um, like, I think that microdosing can be a positive experience um, and really enlightening. Uh, but drinking is just something that I've never been into, and especially I, I mean i would you know go out when i was in college and then once i got on accutane i remember they recommend you obviously not to drink hmm. um because <gasps> accutane you have to be on accutane for a long time nine months that's what i thought yeah you go through like a purging phase of like three months and so it's a it's a cycle mm -hmm. um and when you're on accutane because it's so heavy on the liver you can't drink very heavy on the liver just a huge dose of uh vitamin e that goes through your liver and i remember i drank one time on it the worst pain in my liver that i had felt like hmm. it was awful and i was like oh my gosh like it's terrible and then from then on every time i would even have a sip of something my liver would just be in so much pain like it still does so i just i really don't drink the last time i had a drink um maybe back in like february i had like one drink but it's like once in a blue moon. I'm not really a big alcohol person. Do you think uh, living this lifestyle, you're inspiring your family? I think so. Like my dad, he's lost a lot of weight. Um, he has lost, he went from 215 and now he's down to like 178. Wow. The man is on it. I'm so proud of my dad. And 30, 40 pounds? Yeah, like 30 pounds. And, um, and that inspires me, you know? And also I work with clients, like my oldest is 90, youngest is 20, and uh, averaging probably around the 45 age range. And, um, and, you know, to see these people who are 60 and above and absolutely killing it, like the guy that was at Muscle Beach with his son and he was 61 on stage. Oh yes, uh, Harvey. Harvey. Yes. Amazing. Harvey Franks. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it is it is that that brings me <laughs> so much joy and inspiration. Like, this could be me one day. Like, this this is the life I'm trying to live. Um, you can just see the happiness literally oozing out of these people. And, and it's so inspiring. So I'm sure my dad is inspired by me. But I'm so inspired by him too and just his journey. It's such a mutual, always like turning relationship. Mm -hmm. You have a brother too, right? Mm -hmm. How's he doing? He's good. He's in New York and Manhattan. I saw a picture of him. He looks athletic too. He is. Yeah, yeah, he is. He played soccer, ran track. Like the guy is is 
I mean, he's an athlete for sure. He's a little, we're built different though. Like we just have different genetics. Like I'm much more bigger bone than he is. Hmm. And he has those legs that are like kind of <laughs> bow legged, right? But like soccer player-ish kind of type body, like okay. a little more lanky. Um, and his focus is in bodybuilding, but the guy is fast. He's strong. Um, and so he's doing really well. He's in Manhattan, just living it up. He's like a really on the go guy. Like when you're in New York. Have you gone up there to visit him? Mm -hmm. I went up there after the Rocks Discount show. And um, I mean, New York is just a different pace. And I, I can see he's changed his personality to be in New York. He like, I couldn't live in New York. I, I really do like Texas. Um, he's never coming back. He said, he's like, I'm never coming back to Texas. Yeah, it's completely different up there. Yeah, it is. In a good way. I guess it depends what you want to do, you know? Like, yeah. he's out all the time. Like, you know, sometimes I wish I could walk, like, a week in his shoes because kind of like you, like, you say you're an introvert. I, I would say I'm pretty introvert when it comes to, like, my daily activities. Like, I really, I'll be on, like, Instagram and platforms and stuff, but when it comes down to it, I spend most of my day alone. Um, that, like, I don't have a roommate. I don't have a boyfriend. You have a dog. I have a dog. <laughs> and Taco Bell is amazing. Um, I have friends, but, like, you know, when you're a bodybuilder, you're so kind of, we, we really do as a society and as a culture connect with each other through food, drink, um, activities that, I can't, I, I don't feel great participating in a lot of the time, um, especially on prep. So I'm pretty introverted too. And I would say um, Josh has encouraged me. He's been like, look, I'll pay you if you go out with your friends. Well, and you just need to, um, you know, go on a date with someone who understands the sport. You yeah, know. which I, I mean, I'm open to, but like. I <clears throat> I got out of a long term relationship, yep. and um, I thought I was gonna marry this guy. I thought I was gonna have this kid. Like I thought, you know. And um, when that breaks, I don't want anything in my life for a really long time. Mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying just taking in my own self and not worrying about anybody else except my clients, my family, like my friends, my dog. But it's way different than having to like you know, think about, oh, like, is this person doing okay? So I've just been enjoying myself. 25 years old. 25 years old. Or do you see, see yourself in 35? At 35? Yes. Shit, Chris. <laughs> um, hopefully still bodybuilding. Um, I just got a new client today, and she is a bodybuilder, and she competes bikini. She did the Battle of Texas in 21. And she is 35, had just had a baby six months ago, and, you know, she looks amazing. So I see myself being really successful in um, hopefully helping people and, like, changing people's lives. Um, I am not as focused on money. Like, I think that if you do what you love, the money will come with it. And um, that's my philosophy. So that's how I stay happy. I would like to have kids in the future, which is also why I'm staying in bikini. A lot of the reason, because I just can't afford to risk anything else um and i i want a family one day um and so at 35 i see myself hopefully starting a family with somebody that um i love and that loves me i see myself hopefully um i don't know if my dog will still be around but i see myself having like a, you know, some some animals, some form of animals around me, bodybuilding, helping other people. And uh, I'd like to be like rural or like live in a different area where I'm like more isolated, not in an apartment. You know, I've lived in an apartment since I've been 18. Like, um, so this is a really big change in my life. Like all of this has been ever since I graduated you know, things move so fast. And I didn't realize how quickly life moves until after I graduated. And then I was like, oh, shit, I'm 25 already? Like, Still super young, though. Yeah, I'm young. But, <laughs> and, and I know, yeah. I know. And and But, but, but I yeah, can you feel like it. you'll be 30. Fucking right? Yeah. Like, I remember when I was 20. Mm -hmm. It felt like that. Mm -hmm. 
And and so that again kind of ties back to what we were talking about. Like I'm trying to take in every single moment. Mm-hmm. You never know when it's going to be your last day. Sure. We talked a little bit about uh, post-show blues. That's kind of a maybe taboo topic, but maybe not really. But no, the whole being careful with the kids thing and making sure that you have a healthy period. I mean, is that, is that something that's not talked about enough too? For sure. Like that, that's one thing. That is one thing. Um, I didn't mean to scoff like that. That was kind of that. That's not what I, I, I agree. It's not talked about enough. Like right now I'm not even having a period. Um, which is fine because luckily mine comes back pretty quickly, but really just once you get this lean, like you, you can just expect it to go away. Um, well, honestly, it's kind of a good sign. Sometimes you're like, all right, I'm lean enough. Not really, but I'm getting there. Um, but I get my blood test done and, and my hormones always look real good. How often um, do you get the blood, blood test done? Uh, I get it done before I start a prep and after a prep. Um, because I really respond well during prep. Like I feel fine and uh, I still actually have like a pretty healthy sex drive and like my skin still feels good. Like I feel good. Mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of, you know, if if you want to join this sport, I would recommend to stay as natural as possible for as long as you can. Because it's so common now, especially with the culture of just like kids who are 17 to like 21. And I don't know what made it happen, but like all of a sudden people are just starting steroids. Like it's just uh, like they're eating something or like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's just so normalized men and women and um, to serious repercussions. Like there's, if you were to look at the women who do probably a lot of figure maybe even some um wellness definitely wpd and bodybuilding like you know there's there's nothing you can do once that happens like you're at a point you've taken your body to a point where your your hormones will probably never bounce back to where you can uh, have a child again and so that is something i knew off the bat like uh i've always thought about like i i want a family so that's something I'm not really willing to give up for the sport. And um, that's not even really something I'd be interested in doing. But uh, I can respect the women who who put themselves in that position to get what the fuck they want out of the sport. You know, like it takes a lot of grit. It takes a lot of determination and it takes a lot of sacrifice. And um, I'm sure there are women that have suffered from the feeling of, oh, well, I can't have kids and I'm doing this because you know I love this sport so much that I'm willing to do that um but it should be talked about more I know that PEDs are talked about but uh not enough more doing less talking Mm -hmm. and it is quite taboo like you won't hear somebody unless they're super transparent which I understand like there's not there's very few people who w- will understand the jargon that's used with PEDs. It's confusing. It's confusing. Amounts or, you know, doses, mm-hmm. different types of drugs. What they do is all, um, it, it has to be studied. Like, if you don't know what it is, what's the point in even saying it? These people aren't going to understand. So even if somebody comes up to me and they're like, hey, are you taking steroids? Like, my answer will always be no. Because, like, well... Unless they're like a bodybuilder and I know they know their stuff and we're like having a one-on-one. But if it's just some random person, like, no. Hmm. Because what what good is it going to do for them for me to say yes? Um, maybe I sound like a liar. But like they, at the end of the day, a lot of people don't know what the steroids are or what they're doing. So it's just like I'm kind of like, you don't really need to know. Like you're not really – unless you really – Unless you're like, hey, no, tell me, like, I'm so curious and I want to learn, then okay. But if you're just, like, trying to get an answer out of me to see if I'm, like, natural or not, I'll let you wonder. You know what I mean? Um, But, yeah, PEDs are definitely could be talked about more. And I see a lot of uh, abuse in in the sport, which is sad. But uh, it's also, like, 
But we see, I remember I watched that documentary, um, Pumping Iron, and... I still haven't watched that. Dude, it's good. Yeah. It's a good ass. It's free on YouTube, I believe. Hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. And on Netflix, I think. Um, and, like, people don't pay that much money to go to the Olympia to see someone who's natural. Like, they want to see freaks. This sport was made to watch a genetic freak turn into something even freakier, which is the beauty <laughs> of the sport, you know? Kind of cartoonish. Cartoon, like bionic motherfuckers out here, <laughs> you know? And you couldn't do that without the PED. So there's positives and negatives, and there's different ways to use it. You just have to have the right mentor, I think. Thank you for explaining that. That's very transparent of you. Um, sure, sure. I, I forget who I saw on Instagram, I'll send it to you uh, this weekend. It's some athlete who you love, she's fantastic, T talking transparently about PDs and the way she put her slides. It was like a post on Instagram with five or six different slides, just the way she explained it, which is so wonderful. But unfortunately, I can't remember her name. Does she do that frequently and she puts like captions with it? We're probably not thinking of the same person. But um, I wonder uh, if we are though. I think she's in Florida. But, um, is she, she's the key, like she's, I think she was in figure. Okay. Uh, yeah. She's pretty cool. Where yeah. are we at? This is a great conversation. Um, dude, let's keep talking. You want to keep talking? Yeah. I mean, like, well, SD cards have 20 minutes left on them. So, oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, we can go however, like, we can do whatever. Um, oh, I, this is kind of cool. I, I, I really loved your, um, profile picture. The AVI? Was it AVI? It, it wasn't made by a fan or anything? It yeah. was, yeah. Oh, okay. I but, just call it an Abby. Um, he or she used AI? No, he drew it. He drew it. I'm going to look him up really quickly because love fan art. If anybody wants to draw, like I love looking at people's artistic abilities. Mm -hmm. And let me shout him out because I've had this picture for so long for <clears> a reason <throat> because he did such a great job on it. Um, it's this photo. Yes. And uh, it was made by Flatliner. His name is Will Watkins. Mm -hmm. And when he made this, <laughs> I was just like, dude, like, I love the cartoon look. And so I don't think I'll ever go back to like a profile picture of it being human. Like, I love the idea of social media kind of being this place where you can be your own character. It's like a vid it's like a video game, but professional. It's like mm -hmm. a professional video game. Yeah, it's really cool. Or anime. Yeah, anime. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So much. To, uh, the, a lot of stuff going on with AI. I mean, the yearbook thing that everyone's doing now, is that a, that's all done AI? How do y'all do that? Dude, yeah. Like, okay. So it's six, it's like six bucks, but you get epic. Okay. And you choose like eight to 10 selfies. I don't know if the camera will be able to pick this up, but I did this yearbook thing and it really, I mean, <laughs> for like, for God's sake, like what? I mean, it kind of looks like me. And there's some real funky ones. Like, there's some ones that I was like, eh, like, I kind of look like a 12-year-old. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, maybe I could do without that one. But then there's, like, some really cool ones that are just, like, dope as fuck. And I'm like, this is what's happening now. And um, I'm with it. Like, I roll with social media. I roll with AI. I like technology. I mean, sure, like, there's obviously downsides to it or, mm. and stuff, but hey how else could we have connected how else could we have like got i mean we can meet at shows but like this how this how we we talk to people now as an introvert social media that way you don't have to like talk face to face all the time <laughs> you know yeah. or go out and do anything you just sure. be like hey you know yeah um this studio uh is a little echoey, which is not good for uh, TV shows. But right now we're using AI from Adobe. Um, it's called Enhanced Speech by Adobe, which all videographers are, a lot of videographers are not really using it. That's why we sound good right now. <laughs> sound decent because of this artificial intelligence from Adobe. Like we're so, supposed to be able to hear it right now or will we hear it in a video? So we're actually recording this right now and um, when we post this video, it'll sound really, really awesome. Is it like uh, auto tune? Well, what do you mean by auto tune? Like, is it gonna make my voice sound like? Um, so I think fun? your voice will sound just slightly different, but I'm kind of excited. Very here. similar though. Hopefully, you know, we don't want to adjust our voices too much. You sound like Migos or like, you know, like 
a rapper or something. I mean, like Lil now, Wayne. You're, now you're getting crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I know you're not gonna do that. No, I just wanted to bring up the the the. We are using AI on these on these microphones. I hope um, that sounds really good. No, it will. It will sound good. What about tattoos? I see this tattoo on your calf, or mm -hmm. it kind of wraps around your shin. Um, yeah, you want me to show it? I don't, I don't know if we can pick it up, but you don't have to show it. What we, we'll, we'll, we have, let's pull, throw some stage video up and we can see it on stage. Yeah, that's true. Um, how did you design this and what is it? I, I can't really tell when you have the tan on and stuff. Yeah, so, well, if you didn't see it, it's like a vine and he did stippling. So he like put tiny, tiny little dots everywhere. I find tattoos to be very relaxing. Um, I got this because um, I'll keep being transparent on this. Um, I used to cut myself right here pretty badly uh, before I got into bodybuilding. Um, I just had a lot of pent up things that happened in my childhood. And for some, for whatever reason, when I was 12, like that was just something that I did. And from then on, it just felt good. Um, it's it, the release of endorphins, you know, that's obviously ter terrible, uh, but it really does become sort of like a habit. And so, um, I got this tattoo because I was like, you know, if I get a tattoo there, I won't do it again. Um, and I did do it a couple times over the tattoo, but uh, it's helped a lot. I don't do it anymore. This is way back when you were 12. Yeah, I, so I would I would do the cutting um, from when I was 12 until I was, uh, really until I started bodybuilding. Um, I remember I did it like once through COVID, bad decision, um, but uh and when i started working out though like and i started feeling the endorphins and the pain that you are experiencing when you're doing that last rep oh man like my perspective completely changed i was like this is the pain i'm, I'm i was looking for this is the pain I, I wanted to experience the endorphins like that that rush that you just can't get anywhere else um and so it really helped with that. Uh, so the tattoos, um, this one came from the one on my leg. And I just, at first I wanted the guy to do like an actual sketch of the muscle, like a calf muscle tattoo. And then um, I was like, uh, he was like, I don't know about that. Because I always like the artists to do their own little creative touch, whatever they're doing. I'm like, you kind of add your flavor into it. So there's this guy named Derek I've been going to religiously. And um, we did the vine first, and then we did the the flowers, the stippling. We did this one. He did this this quote on my side from Nietzsche, it's like about dancing or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. And those who were seen dancing were thought to be insane by those who could not hear the music. And I didn't know that, but Steffi Cohen actually has the same tattoo right there. And you know Steffi, um, powerlifter. I. I probably know her yes yeah you probably do yes like if you saw her you'd be like yes. yeah it's Steph Savvy Cohen she's short she's shorter and okay. she's got like an interesting face very exotic <laughs> she's built as fuck yeah um and uh but I do think that tattoos play a huge part in bodybuilding like in the aesthetic of it mm. um I notice <clears throat> like I don't want any more tattoos because and this may just be my personal opinion, but also I notice like most people who win the Olympia or like win, like they don't have a lot of tattoos. You can see, because the judges want to see your lines. They want to see the lines in your body. They want to see the cuts. They want to see everything that you can see. So when you have dark ink covering that, hmm. it's really hard to see like really what your genetics are and where those lines are. Like you work so hard to get lean and then you can't even see like certain striations that you'd want to see. Mm. Um, so uh, I, I am for people like going and doing whatever they want with the tattoos. Um, but I do think that there comes a point in judging where it's like, can't really see much. This person, we can see their lines. It, it could affect your placing. Um, so I don't plan to get any more, but I love them. Is there a way to, uh, you have to use something to take care of them? Like, Tattoos? Like for keeping them fading. Uh, aquifer. What's and that? aquifer is good for, uh, like when you're doing Accutane, they tell mm -hmm. you to put aquifer on because your face dries out. Probably the same kind of thing like when you get a peel or something. Do you, you know? use that? Yes. Okay. Um, but I don't use it on my tattoos anymore. Like, 
I'll just kind of let the tattoos fade. And I mean, if they need a retouch, touch yeah. yeah, you just get them touched up. It's painful, though. <laughs> Is it? Do you have any tats? No, nah, my brother tells me. Yeah. He has, he has one tattoo. He's like, where? Uh, either right or left. I can't remember. It's a Superman. It's a Superman? The whatever. Like the emblem? Yeah. Which is dope. Yeah. That's, um, pretty cool. that's pretty dope. There's definitely like places on the body where it's more sensitive, like, <clears throat> but I think the pain feels pretty good. Like, whenever I go and get a tattoo, I'll put in my headphones, bring my water, and I'll just lay there <laughs> and just let them ink me up, you know? Like, mm -hmm. it's, it feels pretty good. It's kind of relaxing. Yeah. If I got a tattoo, any advice? What should it be? <laughs> Dude, I could see you being like Chinese farmer vibes. Chinese like, farmer? What does that mean? Like old yeah. soul vibes. Like you could get like some like cool. Well, where are you from? Well, rather what's your origin? I don't know how to ask that question. Sure. A lot of people think I'm Mexican. I'd love to be Mexican. Um, I'm ha half Persian. Uh-huh. I'm a quarter Japanese. Uh-huh. And I'm a quarter something else. I don't even know. Okay, yeah, that's where I'm getting it from. You can't tell like some yeah. Japanese or like some Persian um, sort of, I think that the languages look really pretty. Like um, like I have Hebrew right here, um, getting something like, that- What does that say? Eternal life. Okay. For what I, I got it when I got out of rehab, like it was, this cool. was my first tattoo. Sure. Um, but something like, I don't know, Zen. Kind of give me like Zen vibes, like I don't really give a fuck type vibes. Uh, like... I don't know. I, I give. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I give some fucks. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm. Well, what do you want? Like, what would you I feel like? To I'm. Get? I'm very introverted. I'm a deep thinker, probably an overthinker. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, but uh, yeah, I have no idea what the tattoo would be. Yeah, you see, you kind of tapping your leg and like touching. Your it's leg. like something small. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe on the shoulder or something. Really? Maybe. I, was that kind of like seven or? I don't know. I thought it might look or like you know like maybe it's only right here like just like down the. I was interviewing Bryce Stratford at in Humble. Uh huh. Uh, at the show, and uh, man, he's got so many tattoos. It looks good though. I like it. The guy that did the um he did the splits on stage several times. Yeah, he. He's the bullet. Yes. Really, he's really cool. He's, I really like him. Yeah, he was. I'm really, I'm really glad I mentioned him because I'm going to show him this part of the video. <laughs> he so. was, uh, wasn't he the one in the video that said like, he's yes. so proud of 100% of all, everybody yes. here's a winner today. Uh -huh. Yeah, he did have a lot of taps up here. Yeah. He's I was cool. like, yeah, he looked cool. Yeah, he's, he, he makes me smile. Yeah, yeah. He's, he was a cool again dude. All the competitors were really cool. Um, We probably have like five minutes left on these cars. Let's well, end on nationals. Um, you've got to be excited for this. This is in Irving, right? Uh, which is about 20 minutes from here. Um, mm -hmm. I've never seen a national show in Texas. I've been to one like in Pittsburgh. But uh, I mean, you probably don't get nervous. Are you any, any anxiety though <laughs> for a national show? No, I just have anxiety. But like yeah. for the national show, you know, I hear they, I mean, it, it's going to be run so well. It's probably going to move quickly and it's probably going to be just don't they say that 10 times more competitors. Yeah. You know, I definitely believe it'll be a big, big show. Um, I wouldn't say I, I, I if anything, it's good nerves. Um, I'm just really trusting my coach. You know, Jay has done such a great job with me and, um, he's really brought my body to like a different level that I, I've never seen it like this, you know, and it's all from just following the plan. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, <laughs> I believe that I can bring a very good package in the next nine weeks. Um, I believe it's going to be competitive. I believe that, um, the girls that I've competed against so far will also be in nationals. I know that for a fact. Um, and I, it's going to be a battle. And I'm so excited because I love the competition. Like, to me, it's very, it's like, hell yeah. What if there's a Maddie, Jessica repeat? Like, you're on the same. <laughs> well, all I can say is I, uh, 
best of luck to Maddie. She looks amazing. And um, like she said, she just needs some more size. Um, she's also a young girl. See, I think she's a young girl. I can't remember, to be honest. But um, I know there's going to be some paw competition, so I'm pretty excited for that. And uh, I think Maddie's 23, I want to say. Yeah. 20, 22, 23. So she's a little bit younger, um, still has some muscle maturity to put on. Um, and I want to be in the big leagues. I, my goal is to go to the Olympia and compete in the Olympia, um, which with some grit, if I get my pro card and I go and I wreck a pro debut, hey, hello, Olympia. Um, and, and that's, to me, that sounds so cool. That sounds like my dream. That sounds like success in my eyes. And um, that's what I'm working for. You know, um, so I take nationals pretty serious. Um, it's not something I can really like play around with. That's a very, there's a very specific route that I'm taking with nationals to make sure I show up my best. Mm -hmm. um, Cause there's going to be some shows in between. Like I have a few more shows coming up, I have a uh, storm classic. I'm going to do the summer shredding. And Is this in the other league? Yeah, these are, yeah, the Storm Classic is okay. like, um, it's part of Matthew's Storm. And then the Summer Shredding is, you know, Christian Guzman. That's a non sanctioned one. Mm, you've done that before, I think. I did do the Summer Shredding. That's the first show I ever did. And yeah. I, it's, I sucked. Um, you didn't suck. That was awesome. Oh, no, I totally <laughs> sucked, dude. Like, if you go back and, I mean, it was yeah. so embarrassing. But that, it fueled me. It started the bodybuilding career. Uh -huh. Like, that was 2018. And, and yeah. I did bikini. And it was just, that but if i you know and i did so bad there that if i come back and wreck it this time and get first place and be like hey i did your show five years ago here i am today mm -hmm. like my hard work is paying off good for you yeah so that would be really cool and then the gbo mm -hmm. um miss atlas and miss atlas so i wanted to thin that and uh, after that is nationals and mm -hmm. after that is time to chill yes it's time to it's gonna be a long off season um, I'm not sure. It depends how I feel like, you know, every time you kind of do something, you know how like when you do something and then you do it again, the outcome and just because you're in a different mind state is always sort of different. Like it's never the same how you feel after. So last time I felt very like, I just want to eat and like go to bed and like I'm lonely and I don't really like where I'm at right now. Post show blues. Um, but also I was like, eating so i was happy um but this time is like if i win my pro card i'm in a different league now i've got to treat myself like i'm in a different league and and have that attitude mm -hmm. and um i want to bring that i want to bring it so bad next year like i want to wreck it and so i can't I'm, I'm not gonna let myself get off track but I, I want to, you know, go on vacation and yes. and enjoy time with my family. I haven't had Thanksgiving with my family in, you know, so long. Like, I haven't... Christmas come around is fine. Hanukkah come around is fine because it's, like, right after. But, you know, just enjoying time with with my family and, and friends and going out and getting a drink occasionally. Mm -hmm. Even if it hurts my liver a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, um, and just, like... Yeah, you know, so, but managing it to where I do not get so much body fat that I'm uncomfortable trying to prep for a pro show, you know, like, I'm like, all right, like, I can smooth sail into this without being like, mm -hmm. I've gained way too much fat. So that's what my coach is for, you know, he keeps me accountable and he'll look at me and be like, hey, you a little bit like fat. <laughs> like you're gaining a little too much weight slow down mm. but really it's up to the athlete i like the balance you have of competing but also still having fun yeah know? like this is super fun for me um yeah. i don't know people victimize themselves i feel like a lot in this sport they're like oh like i'm in a prep and uh, i'm just cannot wait to get this over with and all this and i'm like dude like you're in a prep like you're doing something that 99% of people cannot do. You're doing something amazing. Keep going. Like don't let it just be a one and done. Like keep going. If it, if it feels good to your body and you're not, I don't know what other coaches' methods are. All I can say is my coach does a really good job at keeping like 
the body healthy. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you're a competitor, like keep going for it, like shows have seasons and, um, and I want to see these girls in nationals that I just competed with, you know, like I'm hoping it's not just a one and done for them because I want to see their improvements too. Uh, it's an individual sport, but it is kind of like a team sport. Like I love uplifting the girls. I love having that sort of competitive, but like a very friendly competition. Yes. Um, it, it really does empower empower me and i hope it empowers them because it's like we come together and like uh like it was said like we put on a great show it's also quite entertaining i think for a lot of people like the judges they don't know like they're trying to figure out like oh well, which one's that and me and her are just battling up there and then we go <laughs> backstage and we're like all right let's battle it out you mm -hmm. know what i mean and yeah. and and that's the vibe i love about this sport is like you, know, you can't get any better than that. I don't know about the men. <laughs> I don't know about the men. I just see them backstage doing whatever the f whatever they're doing, and I'm like, I respect it, bro. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're so big. Yeah, they're so big. Um, but that 18 year old, uh, what's his name? I think Bobak coached him. Um, 18 year old Chris. He looked so good. I was like, damn. You're 18? Was he at the Muscle Beach? Uh-huh. Okay. And he had, like, kind of blonde, like... Yeah, you know. oh, I think I shot video of him. Let's throw that video up there. This is him right now. Yeah. Yeah, he... Yeah. I remember seeing this is him... His men's physique? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and he was a yeah. teen. Yeah. He looked so good. I was like, dude, like, you're 18, keep going. <laughs> keep going. You're killing it. And that's what I love to see is, like, <clears throat> more and more competitors coming into this. And... It's just like, it's so motivating to me. And I want to be a good influence in this sport too. Like, you know, people are younger and um, I mean, like I'm 25, but I remember when I was 20, it was like 2018 and bodybuilding was still kind of on the come up. And mm -hmm. I got a lot of shitty advice from especially men, especially men who are like older and they'd be like, yeah, I do this and this and this and 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 what am what am I to do? I just listen to them because I don't know any better. They're bodybuilders. I'm they they look like that. Like oh, they must be doing something right. Um, so there's a lot of everybody's body's different. Everybody's body is different. Yep. And um, it's just one of those sports where you really have to be smart about it. Sure. Yeah. I love talking to you, Jessica. Um, I think these cameras are just about to run. I see that red light. It's still on. Oh my gosh, um, this is so fun. Um, this is awesome. I, look, I loved how you, uh, I just thought of something. Um, let's end the show on, um, I have so much video of you on stage from Humble. Uh -huh. So let's just play all that right now. Wait, really? Yeah, well, well in post. Well, you can't see it now. We'll see it. Y'all will see it and you will see it later. Okay. Uh, and, uh, I saw Maddie's video. She looked, that was a great video. Yes. Uh, so uh, we'll roll that right now and, and thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. you are freaking awesome. And thank you guys for tuning in and watching wherever you're watching from. Follow, follow us on the gram. <laughs> we'll keep you entertained.
Let's present fifth place to number 104, Miss Faith Allen. Fourth place, number 136.